Hello, I'm Peter with Has Offers. Uh, we're a Seattle-based company. And up until May, we were bootstrapped. We grew to 80 employees. And uh, we do advertising attribution at the basic level. But in late 2011, we realized there was a much bigger need in mobile app advertising attribution. How many of you have a, a mobile app with your company for the most part? How many of you are doing user acquisition for your mobile app? Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Um, this is not the right slide. But we'll just start here. I think we all pretty much know the trends. You guys have probably been talking about it all day. Uh, but mobile, mobile advertising specifically is growing 100% year over year. And something even more interesting to me, I don't know how many of you saw this come out of Flurry this past year, but 80% of smartphone usage is happening in app. Uh, that means happening within some kind of a mobile app native experience. That kind of like just completely dislodged my whole concept of what's happening on mobile devices right now. Uh, I mean, when you think about what a market share Google has, especially through search, and that's happening through the browser. Um, but then, let's see here, we got 32% of usage is happening in games, 18% in Facebook, 8% is in entertainment, uh, and, the, and the other is just sort of divided across social networking, news, and productivity. Um, we start to think about users are, are using these native experiences while they're on the go. And uh, I think this chart really shows that you know, in, a, in, a, in a more interesting light where you watch television, this blue line, uh, and the usage ramp up there you know, over the peak time, and internet down at the bottom, and iOS and Android apps staying on top all the way through the day. Like all the way until that peak time. And then, yeah, television kind of crosses over the top of it. But for the most part, people are spending all their time connected to the world through a mobile app. So obviously, this is a fantastic opportunity for marketers and advertisers, <laughs> us people that are trying to do user acquisition. And the big spenders in that space right now, yes, they are mobile games, okay? So they have major budgets, they understand direct response, um, they are performance marketers by trade. Uh, you see at the top over there, top left, how many of you, how many can name this one? Anyone name it? Oh, Clash of Clans, all right. And the next one over, Kingdoms of Camelot. Uh, I think this one's really interesting because Kingdoms of Camelot, when we started working with them uh, in, I guess it was early 2012, they were working with a couple of different advertising channels, promoting Kingdoms of Camelot, trying to get new users in the game. And they started to figure out, hey, we need to understand which users are installing, uh, which, which, which sources are causing users to install our app. But not only that, that are causing users to continue on and make purchases in our app and have a high lifetime value. Um, and they continued to, to, to uh, to work with more and more partners as they could understand that value up to over 100 different partners at once and became the top grossing apps in the iTunes store for 2012, for the entire year of 2012, which is pretty wild. Um, the next big up and comers are mobile first companies, they are e commerce companies, they're travel companies, they're entertainment. Um, these are all folks that we're engaging with now that uh, are realizing we really can access th these new user bases uh, through native apps. And we can advertise within other apps, we can advertise on major, pu major publishing partners, but once they do engage with us, they come into our app experience and we've got them. And, and we really can create an end-to-end -end marketing solution. So what our product in, does today, mobile app tracking, is it provides advertising attribution. Um, and what I really want to talk about today, whether or not you use our product uh, or not, is that you need unbiased attribution for your advertising. I think I can convince you of that pretty easily. You say, ah, it's okay, bro, I've got it covered. Well, no, you don't. <laughs> There's so many SDKs out there. So if you want to work with all these partners, which you should probably try out most of them. I mean, you got Google AdWords, Facebook, uh, Flurry's App Circle, TapJoy, Inmobi. You guys know Millennial Media and JumpTap and TapJoy and all these folks. Um, they all have a technology for attributing users back to them, saying, hey, I caused a user to install your app, or hey, I caused a user to continue on in your app and make purchases. But 
as soon as you go over to your engineering team and say, hey, could you just install one more SDK for me and get that going, uh, <laughs> you realize that they are, they are starting to give you this, and they're saying, no more. I can't do it anymore. Not only is this annoying the hell out of me, but it also is really hampering the performance of our app. And that is causing users to leave our app <laughs> over time. So, so first of all, you need something that's going to manage all of these different SDKs rather than having to continue to go back and install a new one every time. Also, you need to attribute uh, the install back to the last click. If a user clicks on you know, an ad from Facebook and, con and continues on three or four days later and clicks on an ad from Millennial Media and then installs your app, if you have an SDK for both, then both get credit for that install. Therefore, you're paying for both installs. So if you have one single unbiased attribution source, then you can only pay for the last click. Probably one of the least talked about but most important factors is that you have control of your own data and that you are able to adhere to your own privacy policies with your own consumers and that you control where data goes out and what data comes in. Without your own attribution platform in place, you're relying on SDKs that are firing off information to all these different partners in the way that they choose. I'll quickly roll through how attribution works on mobile apps just so that you can kind of understand it from a high level. First of all, there's a tracking link. Uh, and that tracking link collects information from the user when the user clicks on the ad, right? Then the user is redirected to the app store and continues down the funnel. And once they've opened up the app for the first time, your attribution system or an SDK fires up information about that user. And we go to see, hey, have we seen this user before? If we have, then we have attribution. And that's the basic concept. But once you've, once you've actually determined where this user came from, probably the more, more interesting piece is what does that user do over time? I want to know, out of the users that came from Facebook, did they make purchases? Did they level up? Did they spend a lot of time and engage and open my app many times? What kind of retention do I have there? And I want to be able to look at my lifetime value per user, which everyone talks about all the time, but I want to look at it based on my advertising channels. I want to see which channels provide the best lifetime value per user. And closing the loop on attribution is interacting with all of these third parties and making sure that they know that they got credit for these installs. So in that example I was talking about, you know, Millennial Media, for example, well, how is it that Millennial Media is going to charge me for an install if they don't have their SDK installed in my app? Well, it comes back to creating a postback or a server postback. And that seems a little bit complicated. Uh, if, if you don't know that terminology, you haven't talked about server postbacks and, and worked in online advertising deeply. Um, but all it is is pinging back to this third party person, whether it's AdWords or Millennial or AdCon or whoever it is, and saying, hey, this install occurred. I give you credit for this. You can charge me for this. Uh, in mobile app tracking, it's basically there are templates for every one of these partners that you have, and you can click, hey, let's launch a server postback so that every time I get an install from InMobi, they know about it. Uh, the, the really important piece here, again, is that you control where the data goes. If you use another SDK or use an SDK that is built or managed by an agency or a network, then that SDK fires the information that they choose. If you create the post back within your own unbiased attribution system, then they get exactly the data that you say could be passed. Now, for example, in mobile app tracking, we have templates for all these different networks, and they tell us what it is they want to receive. Um, but what we do is make sure that the advertiser or the person who has the mobile app can change that or alter it in any way so that the proper data is moved forward. So that's pretty much it. Um, mobile app tracking uh, has become kind of an industry standard right now. Uh, we're working with uh, all the largest gaming companies around the world, um, launching very heavily now into travel and entertainment. Uh, Trulia, actually, um, is, a, is a client, as well as uh, folks like Airbnb and uh, and Uber and, and Kayak.com, Hotel Tonight. Um, 
And we're starting to see that this, this growing group of user acquisition specialists are understanding the value and the need for an unbiased player in the market. It's something that I wish we would have had uh, you know, originally in the web. And at certain points we did before certain consolidations <laughs> took place. But right now, you certainly have an opportunity as a marketer and as a brand owner to take on your own attribution system, take control into your own hands, and work with the partners that you want to to get the best possible users and the best possible lifetime value. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for letting me share the stage. This has been amazing. Great, thank yeah. you.